mean, I see, I see it in the budget, but I don't see a contract approval. Uh, yeah. I don't see that that council actually approved the contract. I appreciate it, but I will check that for you. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah. <coughs> we did. I mean, we'll find it out. We just, we just. When are you ready? Brian was here. He disclosed his his uh, confidentiality. Are we ready? All right. All right, gentlemen. Uh, I think he did say that in, in the, the, the one open space committee meeting we had. Okay. I, I, missed, I missed a complaint. Yeah, we just that aspect I'll remember. All right, I'd like to open up the personnel and finance committee meeting for the uh, April 19th. Uh, open us to the courtesy of the floor. Seeing no one. Go right into review of the county executive's reappointments. Um, first thing I have here is recommendation for reappointment to the general purpose authority. Submitting the following individuals for reappointment. I have Sean Donahue, MBA from Bethlehem, PA. J. Michael Dowd from Easton, PA. Each is being considered for a five-year term to begin date of resolution approval and to end December 31st, 2021. And their resumes are attached. Questions, concerns? Anything? Yes. Motion to move it forward for tomorrow night? All right, do that. Next thing I have is Open Space Advisory Board. Recommendations for reappointment. We have the reappointments of Victoria. Uh, yeah, okay. Victoria Bastidas for Bethlehem, PA. It's Judith Hankel from Mount Bethel, PA. Claire Wildermuth Sadler from Bethlehem, PA, and R. Michael Topping from Bethlehem, PA. They are being considered for a two year term to begin effective upon resolution. Approval to end March 18th, 2019. If all the resumes are attached, and they are all reappointments. So, any questions, concerns? Just a comment. I know all of these folks, and they've been really dedicated uh, to this board. So, I think they're uh, terrific candidates, and I'll support them. Okay, we'll take that as a recommendation and put it through to tomorrow night then. Thank you. All right, the next thing here I have is a review of personnel requests, Department of Human Services, Children and Youth, Family Division, and Drug and Alcohol Division. If I have my paperwork right here. All right. Um, Please accept a memorandum as a request for children, youth, and families, CYF, to eliminate one caseworker, two position pay grade, PS-35, 39,446 to 64,312, and organization 52900, and create one attorney, two position, pay grade, HS-45B, 63,000 to 98,000, and org 52800. The attorney two position is needed due to the changes in the Child Protective Services Law that went into effect on December 31st, 2014, which resulted in increases in child abuse referrals, indicated findings of abuse, child abuse appeals, juvenile court case filings, as well as an increase in other court-related offices. In addition, CYF would like to create one caseworker three position, pay grade PS-37A, 42,471 to 70,839. In organization 53100. These positions have been approved by civil service and will be reimbursed by the state accordingly. Okay? Next thing I have on here is the Drug and Alcohol DA Division is requesting to eliminate one clerk typist position, pay grade PS 27, 28,000 to 44,000 in organization 61500, and create one. DA case management specialist position, pay grade PS-35, 39,466 to 64,312 in organizations 32,500. This position is needed due to the increase in job duties in the DA division as a result of the creation of expansion of drug court. The positions will all be reimbursed by the state accordingly. Anybody have any questions on all this? Concerns? Uh, first question that I would have uh, relates to the, the children and youth positions. Are these uh, related to the Sandusky legislation? That uh, Yes, absolutely, we, okay. especially the attorney, because the increase in referrals that the mm -hmm. agency is handling 
results in increased court work, which, mm. of course, you need an attorney for. And that was my next question. Um, why is this position not part of the solicitor's office and a separate a attorney position? Children and Youth has, at this point, a full-time attorney to handle these types of things that is not associated with the solicitor's office. It is a human services funded by, reimbursed by the state office mm -hmm. of children, youth, and families. It is in that vein that we are looking to create an additional att full-time attorney for children and youth, funded by the state, reimbursed accordingly, not through the solicitor's office. Okay. Yeah, and, I, and because it's funded by the state, I really have no problem with any of the changes. I mean, it's... Well, we hope it's funded by the well, state. <laughs> Republican controlled. <laughs> you can make that happen. <laughs> Governor. Uh, Governor. I believe what we will try to do is not have an attorney from the solicitor's office for human services because with this full time position, we can also incorporate some of the other human service attorney needs. But that's the solicitor's office, and we don't think we need from him. But right now? From the solicitor's office, yes, we do. And is that no. That Val is our full-time children and youth attorney. So you're, you're going to get another Val. Correct. Okay. We want another Val. We need another Val, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead. I, it just more for down the road. I know with all the, the caseload that's we're getting hit with, um, have you looked at do we need more caseworkers, and is that something you're considering for the budget at the end of we the year? We are always evaluating that, and if you folks recall in the budget that was uh, put forth for 2017, we added three more additional workers and one supervisor for that very reason. So we are always looking at that and making sure our workload is at least commensurate with what the requirements are. But we are always looking. Okay. Any other questions? Motion to move it forward for tomorrow night, as is. All right, we'll do that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The last thing I have is the Department of Public Works. This is a, uh, David Kessler is your operations and maintenance supervisor who resides at Graysdale Nursing Home. He was promoted to the position February 15, 2015, has provided exceptional performance during his tenure. Dave's counterpart, Roger Pulsini, who works at the courthouse, was promoted approximately the same time, has less tenure, makes one step higher than Dave with equal responsibility. The county executive respectfully requests your support in moving the salary of David Kessler one step from CS 28-4-D. 67425 to CS 28 5 E 70,458. The difference of 3,000 will be absorbed by the public works budget. Um, John, you don't have to come to us to move one step, I don't believe. Well, we just want to make sure that we're not violating any Right, I mean, if it's more than one step, you know, as we yeah, had our no, thing. Uh, but uh, per the agreement, we're, this is uh, both you know, informing council that we'd like to do this, and then if you so choose to uh, uh, confirm that, our... uh, that'd be great. But we'd like to move them one step uh, in, in the process. So it's a matter of just making sure we're communicating to council what we're doing. Well, I, I, I appreciate it, but for one step, I think that's under your purview, but we'll take questions. Go ahead. What do you no, mean? not for now. I just uh, had a, a question about Ms. Trapp. I understand that I'm I'm assuming if there's any questions tomorrow, because we don't have the full council, will she be available tomorrow um, night? Uh, right now, uh, I'm going to assume not, uh, because uh, of the uh, she was in a uh, car accident the day before yesterday, um, and uh, her physician is is restricting her from uh, being available to uh, to work. And I think she has a follow up tomorrow. It is possible. I'm going to say at this point, likely not, okay. um, uh, because of that. All right. Thank you. I mean. I, I don't see, I, I don't foresee any questions here. It's a $3,000 and it's a single step. So, I mean, although you're giving us a bite at the apple here, um, I don't see any reason not to put it through and support it. Um, uh, Dave's, Dave's done, but, an, uh, uh, he, he's done an excellent job. Uh, really stepped up. And, uh, I mean, we appreciate the notice and all, but. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, if, if this is sufficient for council and you want to take it off the the agenda for tomorrow, and now we'll just consider this formal what do you notification. Want, I mean, in a, uh, that's fine with me. Because I mean, it's one step. You don't. I mean, you have to come with us two two steps, three steps. You're trying to jump somebody. I will let it on and put it through for full council tomorrow, just to, for. I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. You'll make the motion to just keep it on. Okay. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. All right. That's my last thing, so I'm going to go for adjournment. Thank you very much. All right. Is there at this time? Is there anybody who would like to the uh, beginning of the finance committee? Is there anybody like to address the finance committee? Yeah, actually, I have a, a comment or a question. Um, if you all recall, uh, last year, uh, Council passed a resolution asking for a review of the Administrative Code, and uh, particularly Act 13 uh, was, was the major crux of what we were interested in, in looking at. Um, the previous Director of Administration took a look at it, and, uh, you know, since his departure, that that initiative seems to have stalled. I guess my question for, for other members of council is whether or not you want to continue to move through that with, I mean, we initially we wanted to do it with an RFP uh, and get proposals, uh, or if, if you would just, you know, like me to reach out and see if there's consultants that are interested. I, I, I don't know. I think the resolution we passed asked uh, for an RFP for some, you know, legal consulting services to, to review that. But, um, you know, again, I'd just like some input uh, and maybe the administration would, because I, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. Yeah, that, that's an exercise that um, uh, we had uh, intended to uh, take on. Uh, but quite honestly, the administration's gotten bogged down with a number of mm -hmm. uh, important and uh, major projects with that. Uh, so it has not significantly moved forward, which we talked about, I think, a few mm -hmm. months ago. Uh, so uh, that's, that's kind of where we are. So any, any ideas council has uh, to entertain getting it unstuck, uh, uh, I'll leave it for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in it, as I said. Sherman's an area I think we like. It's a disease. I, I, I <laughs> Yeah, and the and the complexity um, it's it's not so much in, in looking at the particular language of the uh, of the code and, and 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 that that's kind of a surface level. Uh, what we, what we had started endeavoring on doing is uh, no matter what you would what we would change. And let's say there's a you know a half a dozen changes. There's a ripple um, through each layer of the county uh, as you move through. What does that mean? What does it mean for procurement? What does it mean for legal? And what we're trying to do is really uh, a kind of map. Um, if we know if we change anything, that we have to make sure we have these uh, concurrent or um, you know a dozen other changes so it remains uh, uh, holistic, um, if you would, and complete, and not like we've encountered where you make a change and never gets implemented mm. over here because it was never identified to have that kind of impact. So we were attempting, uh, uh, Director Campos at the time was reaching out to the departments and stuff, and it really became a major part of uh, what he was uh, undertaking. Uh, and that's really the more of a concern than uh, getting in and cleaning up the language. It's the implementation of what that those changes might mean, and are we, we being complete through the whole system uh, with it? Uh, and even in the, the work that was done, um, even logically you go through and like, oh, I didn't even think that about it. That would affect this department or that um, uh, clerical position or, you know, that policy. You know, so there, there's several pieces that we were attempting to uh, map out and then bring back and say, okay, now go ahead and make we can make whatever changes you might envision or or review. So that that was the attempt we made, and uh, unfortunately we uh, we really didn't get too too deep into that.
but it wouldn't be like the administration doing it and saying, okay, let's you know put it together now. I understand that the front work that has to be done, is, you know, it's a work breakdown structure. Yeah, no, it's uh, not that. It's the county down to the purchase and everywhere else it fits, um, and it's a big job. Well, yeah, that's yeah, I mean. that's, yeah, that's and that, well, and that's, a, I mean, that's a good way to look, kind of like, you know, like a flow chart uh, process, and uh, even when you get into a particular department, um, it's not just a individual that we would talk to, and let's say you and I were going to agree to it, and we, we go into um, fiscal, great, okay, there may be several aspects to fiscal that get affected, so each one of those become another conversation, another identification with that. In some cases, it would just be a single one off, but that's the, that's the, uh, the, the process. Yeah. I'm not um, thinking that that the administration would have to do it. I'm just saying that the No, I no, I, I, I'm clear what you're mm -hmm. um, what you're um, proposing. Yeah, again, we we were, as the administration, we were trying to do that work up front um, to save us time and money. Uh, we just so, uh, so I would I would ask then the members of council that have raised this, what is your desire at this point then? My, my interest would be that we look into the RFP for consulting services and see if there's an interest because I know if if we go that route, a, a product. Uh, will be produced as a result of that and I, I think that that would serve to move the process forward and we could you know certainly involve all the stakeholders as as part of that um, you know I guess the, the, the question is can you move an RFP or RFQ RFP for you know such an idea what I will commit to do out of this conversation simply uh, identify if there are RFP templates or RFQ templates, um, or do we have to actually craft something uh, from scratch? And and the key there is just making sure in the RFQ or the or the RFP that we identify at least the the overall. Make sure we have the scope well defined. Otherwise, you get, uh, yeah, you get bad information back. So um, I'll work on at least identifying: are there templates? Are there examples? And we can talk to some of the other counties or things that may have gone. Um, down a similar path and at least come back and, and provide some feedback to council of that possibility if that's uh, an agreed to next step. Is, are there any other members of council want to address this item before we move on? Seeing none, thank you. Very good. All right, we'll get in then to, uh, is there anybody else for courtesy of the floor? Seeing none, we'll move forward then into the review of the Article 13 contracts. The first one is the RKR Hess contract. This is for engineering and design for painting of five county bridges. Mr. Ruges, do you want to step forward and help us? According to, the, according to what my paperwork tells me, there were 20 firms that accept, uh, assessed the RFP, but only one actually submitted a proposal. Yeah, that was the wildest thing. I, I couldn't believe that either. I thought, uh, I thought we would have had more. However, it seems that the discipline itself of painting is a little, is a little tighter. Most of the people thought that the discipline would have been, go figure, but it would have been more structural, which is that what they wanted to do. Right. And it's easy to build a bridge, but it's easy to design a bridge, but to build a bridge, it's a little more difficult in painting. It's a lot more stringent. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of qual. There's QP1 and QP2. There's all kind of things that you have to have qualifiers to paint a bridge anymore to make them last. You know, you can just throw a coat of paint on like our battleships in the Navy and they just Keep rust painting. again. Right. But um, there's all, there's a state mandated mm -hmm. QP1 and QP2 and you have to be pre-qualified and you have to have containment when you're sandblasting and you have to have, it's, it's, it's a night, it's specialty really now anymore. Okay. All right. Well, then. based on your, uh, based on your experiences, do you feel that this is a reasonable number even though we only got the one bid back? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who. Yeah. I, our RKR is going to be like okay. the clerk of the works. Is that what they're doing? They're bidding to be the clerk of the works to oversee the five bridges to make sure they're yeah, done we're, right? We're, exactly. They're so they're going to be like a construction yeah. manager? Well, they won't be to the extent of a construction manager. They'll show up at the times that are the critical points of, <coughs> right. of the work. 
and then make sure that the process, they won't be there 100%. 100%. Right, right. Well, it'll be the guy who inspects and makes sure that the millage is right when they're painting and make sure that when they sandblast, yeah, they yeah. coat it right away within the hour right. and all, all those all correct. those crazy all deals. Points. That's who our, uh, that's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and, and then we'll get another uh, person to actually paint it. So. Let's, let's do this in order. Mr. Sure. Mr. Phillips had asked to be recognized. Let's recognize <laughs> Mr. Phillips, and so, we'll come back to you, Mr. Dietz. Um, is this really for engineering and design? Yeah, because you have to. Or is it oversight? <coughs> no, it's engineering design. It's it's the whole, it's the whole understanding of what paints need to be there. The only thing, and we're just going to go to the basic colors as well. But it's, the paint is so specific because you want the paint to last 30, 40 years. But will they, are, are they, I understand the engineering and design part of it, but do they have responsibility to do any inspection of the ongoing work. Oh yes, and, yes, they'll be that and, as well. And the completion. Absolutely, they'll be they'll be punch list at the end. Absolutely, just like we do with the design engineers we use now. <coughs> so basically, we're, we're paying them, and I'm just I'm just to understand this. About there's five bridges, and it's forty five thousand dollars. So that's like nine nine thousand dollars per bridge. Them. Ten exactly. ten grand per bridge. Yeah. For oversight, for determining that they're using the right process. Well, that the they right are paint. that they're 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 specking the process as well. They're on, they're making sure that the true containment system, the correct containment system, is in place. Because if, if there's any lead-based paint or things like that, they're going to make sure the containment's in place also. Now, are they helping write the RFP for the actual the, the, oh, yeah. the paint? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our. Um, Capital projects meetings when we get a little shorter because we're going through this stuff. Mm -hmm. right, thanks. Okay. Any, Mr. Deeds, nothing? Do you have anything else, Mr. Mr. Graf? All right. Very good. So we'll recommend it to move it forward. Motion? So move it. Very good. All right. The next one, uh, Mr. Rouges, that we have in front of us is the one for the Alfred Benish Company for the Engineering and Design Services Replacement of Bridge 115 in Mill Street in the Bat Borough of Bath. For a price tag of 199,628. According to this, you had 39 firms who accept, assessed that, and 13 submitted responses. That is correct. Okay. Can you um, tell us a little bit about that one. The the bridge is um, a critical bridge on our part. It, it it is adjacent to the Bath Sewer Authority, along with the trail a trailhead too for the North Bath Lake, and then this this will. This work will also be in concert with working with Keystone, uh, Norfolk and Southern, um, to confirm that the bridge is built correctly. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Worcester Warner? For the replacement. For the replacement. That's true. So, again, now, the end result of this will be an RFP, an RFP. Or, uh, no, no, the end result of this, we, this is the RFP. The end result of this will then um, put out bids for contractors to do the work. Yeah, that's how To work. actually do the replacement yes, itself. Yes, to replace. Now, that's, that also is critical because there will be a new sewer line that has to be uh, rung underneath uh, the new bridge. I had a question. Now, yeah, this, uh, it indicates it's a 2013 bond um, issue is where these funds are coming from. Is there a timetable where this has to be completed by, where we would run into you know, arbitrage um, or any of those other issues? And Act 13 monies oh. as well. The 2013 bond we um, in arbitrage because 2013 was not started until essentially we took over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're in arbitrage right now with that because you have to be able to have a depreciable asset, Bridge 102 and 213, because the issues there with the eminent domain pushed oh, us to okay. arbitrage. This is we're using a lot of Act 13. If there's money available from the bond, we could theoretically use in this because we have an asset. Right. That 2013 uh, market spot statement was made last year. So for that bond, so we, bought, so we, did, we did reach that limit where we had a file. Okay, so we actually have to spend money on this. It's not, we're, we're covered in the 
right. Okay. Very good. Anybody else have anything? Recommendation to move it forward to tomorrow night. So moved by Mr. Dietz. Thank you. All right. Next one in line then uh, for you, Mr. Ruges, is the uh, Borton Lawson contract. And this one is for an additional expenditure of $56,061.39. 95% of which will be reimbursed by PennDOT, leaving the county share at $2,803.07. Uh, the oversight of the construction services uh, and preliminary engineering design and construction. That is correct. Okay. What, um, because of the issues we've had with Bridge 102 with the underground stream, we just had to push it out uh, to a completion in final completion punch work at the middle of July. So they will be part of the oversight. Okay. And anybody have any questions for Mr. Ruges on this one? Okay. Mr. Werner? Um, we, have, we had approved this and now they came back to us with, is this is what you would call a change order? Um, not a change order, additional services. Additional this services. Really because we're, <clears throat> part of this money also goes to the geotechnical because of the underground stream. Was the stream, did we, were we aware of that stream problem when we did this the first time? I was not. Okay. I knew that PennDOT and DEP require um, borings. Okay. But the amount that we found. <laughs> okay. I. No offense, but a flag goes up with Borton Lawson when I look They've at They've actually been different. We've, um, we've changed some engine. The, uh, we're dealing now with the vice presidents out of Wilkesboro, who are very in tune to our, our needs. I mean, it's not going to cost us that much. It's not that much. It's just the fact it's that the they, they came back again after the first time. So I just that's it. That's all that question was for. Yeah, there right? and, um, yeah. we've been dealing with a gentleman. That by, uh, his, his name is Mark Boris. And he is the type of engineer. He grew up in the field first as a, uh, working for the contractor and then be putting himself through school as an inspector and being this, he's been very good with us. Okay. Thank you. It's okay. You beat me to the question, Mr. Werner. I was yeah. going to ask the same thing. He, Mr. Graff, did you have them? Okay. So I have a recommendation to move this one forward then mm -hmm. to tomorrow night. Mr. Deet, so moved. Very good. Next one is the one that I have been waiting for, as well as many others for a long time. The contract to Wingap Electric to install generators at Graysdale Nursing Home. You want to go through that? Total contract value is for two contracts, general construction and electrical, of $1,050,400. Anybody have any questions at all on this one? Mr. Warner, do you want to recommend to move this I forward? I absolutely will. <laughs> I have no question, considering what we went through the first time, yes. All right. Stan, good job. Amen. Amen to that. Very good. Yes. Uh, I'd like to a capital project question. Uh oh. My friend. Q th uh, at the end of Q3, hopefully, okay. um, we've been able to, maybe because the industry itself, it's been slowing down. So when we when the first project came out with our friend, who the previous engineer, there was year anywhere from 24 weeks to a year to get the generators from the manufacturer. Now it's anywhere I've been I've hit, seen quotes of specific models anywhere from 12 to 20 weeks, depending on how you and how you uh, fit them out internally. So so that's good. We got here. We got these two in pretty good time. So that's a good thing. Okay. I have a question. Mr. Kraft. I have a question for you, Stan. Uh, wind cap electrics at one five, million five six five. Mm -hmm. And the high bid was uh, Pagoda Electric from Reading, wherever that is, two million six. Yes. Right? Pfizer, that Delta, that million dollars. Um yeah, whatever, Shannon Smith, million nine. Um and basically the middle price is around two million from Alborel. Um, usually when I see bids and prices and they're all over the place, you usually throw out the lowest, throw out the highest, and the middle one's usually the one that's the right number. Do you think by them leaving $500,000 on the table, they're circumventing prevailing wage laws that are trying to that cheat thing, somehow? And one thing, that was Aris Engineering, who is the, who was our electrical engineering, ourselves thought about, and procurement also. So what we did is I made a phone call to the owners and they wanted the job. 
So essentially, they're not marking up the cost of the generators. Typically, they double the price of the generators, and that's where that delta becomes. It's $500,000. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, the high bid's a million dollars over, a million dollars, mm -hmm. okay? And the, the, the next ones are a million nine, two million two, and then you got one million five. Mm -hmm. Two six, one nine, two two, you know, one five. It seems like it's awfully low. I'm just wondering if they can actually perform and do the job or what kind of corners they're going to cut. I mean, well, I listen, I'm not leaving $500,000 mm -hmm. on the table for you any day of the week, okay? Mm -hmm. And if I left that kind of money on the table, I'd be really worried about my bid and what the heck did I do? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't use that word. I'd use a colorful more word in, there, in that sentence. So I'm just worried, and I'm just putting you on notice that I think something's going to go awry here for, you know, that bid being way too low. That's fair. Not that I don't like not spending money and getting things cheap, but, you know, I wouldn't get my heart transplant from the lowest bidder either. So, you know, this is a piece of equipment that we need that needs to be operational and needs to function and not have any kind of major, major problems in the next two years because somebody cheaped out and used aluminum well, wiring, you one know? One thing we also did was we took it upon ourselves with Aris Engineering to bring in a commissioning agent. And that commissioning agent will make sure at the critical times uh, the wiring, the, the actual, how do I say it, um, in, in layman, um, that when they plug it in, it's going to work. And they want to make sure all the Y deltas are correct. That's, that commissioning agent will also be in place to make sure that they do not miss any steps. All right. Mr. Dietz? Well, I'm just looking at it here. So, so I guess Wing Gap Electric is the only one that put in a general construction the bid? One. So, um, so did the other ones, are they combined then? Is that because, no, no. okay, because because that puts them right in line with what no, you're saying no. if, if you yeah, add those two was, together. And there is going to be some self-performing of the concrete pads, but there's other things that we need from the GC side. But you're absolutely right. There was some there. There was some overlap, but um, uh, WinGap did break it down into the GC work. But we did not get it, um, any any other additional bits of GC, okay. just WinGap. Okay. The, uh, I mean, just the numbers are one thing, which is I, I get what Ken's saying, and but there's there's a benefit of having WinGap. Uh, being a general contractor and also being an electrical contractor, mm -hmm. I mean, it's you, you, you. Live, so I like that. Now, if the numbers came out differently, I probably would be talking a little bit different. But since the numbers are coming out the way they are, and Wind Gap is the general and the electrical, and what's your, you, you've had good experience with Wind Gap yes. in the past. Yes. Absolutely so, we have. and I, I don't. Ken, Ken makes a lot of sense in what he says, but I'm, I'm yeah. comfortable with this. We were hesitant also, and so we had to, I had to, we had to make those phone calls. Yeah, absolutely. Had to redo their bids and look at their bids, but they were not going to mark up the materials. Just keep all the certified payables. Absolutely. Does anybody else have anything for Mr. Rouges before we move this forward? Do I have a recommendation to move forward for tomorrow night? And I do. Very good. Thanks, Mr. Dietz. So moved. <laughs> Next contract that we have is for the correctional. Do we have anybody here for, wants to address that from the administration? It's a $6 million contract. Yeah, it's a $6 million. Do you want to skip? I'll tell you what, Mr. Rouges, you're standing. Let's skip yeah, that skip for a minute that. while the administration decides who's going to address it. We'll go to the tier point contract. And that. Uh, that is for the disaster recovery? That is correct. It's up for a hot, hot site we've been talking about for some time. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's to award a bid to Tier Point. Tier Point is located in, located in Bethlehem. Um, full disclosure, before I went to Digital World, before I came here to get involved in the <coughs> International, I was with these people. They have their a Tier 2 data center in Bethlehem. They also operate the... Um, a site in um, 9999 Hamilton, plus there's 45 other sites throughout the country. What this is for is for three cabinets for a five-year term, cabinets included, for a hot, hot site. For example, the I believe it was about five Saturdays ago, we had to shut down the prison. We, uh, along with Juvie and a few of the other operations of the government center, along with Graysdale, 
because we had to we had an electric interruption where we installed a transfer switch. By having a hot hot site, we would not have had to do that. Number one. Number two is, for example, if we're in voting, and because now everything's electronic, if we have a hot hot site and this facility goes down, voting would go down. Now with having a hot site, it's they mirror each other, and so the the data would then come out of the hot site in Bethlehem. So that's what we're going right now. Please, uh, Mr. Phillips, go ahead. I'm I'm um, a little concerned about the proximity well, between Easton and Bethlehem. I mean, in 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 well, we, business we, I've ever had, they so help me. So, so well, we we talked about in terms of the location now. Because it's going to be hot, because we're going to have to man it ourselves, we don't have the capabilities, we don't have the capacity of people to go out because it is Xerox. Essentially, it's going to be Dave Hill and part of his team that are going to be going there. That's correct, number one. Number two is if it's far away, if it's, a, if it's out of the 50-mile blast zone, which is what typically like the people in the city look at, you know, that's, there's some credence to that. But now, all of a sudden, we have the transport cost that's going to quadruple, that's number one. Number two, when we, when we dealt with Barron's ING, uh, they were located in the city, we tried to bring them here to Bethlehem, but hell, the, the uh, CFO lived in Summit, and he, they still went to Jersey City, which they could see the buildings in, in, in the distance. So, it, interesting is, when we did map this, we, do, we are in different grids. That is on, Bethlehem is on PPL, and this is on MedEd. So that's a good thing. So we, and then part of our redundant ring that's being built between Graysdale, DHS, and this facility is we do take into account the different power grids as well, PPL to MedEd. So this is that tier point would be in PPL. Here we're in MedEd. I'm just concerned about um, a true a true disaster. That would that would hit both sites. Well, a, a true disaster to hit both sites. You know, the, we we've had disasters here where their data center shut down. Now all of a sudden, if we start going to a uh, a, a comparable company like a tier point going out of Philly to mm -hmm. or to New Jersey, you're now into. Well, let's say I mean it is unusual to have a, a DR site 11 miles away from from your primary location. It's it's. I don't, I don't disagree, but there are, you know, St. Luke's hot site is, St. Luke's is a Bethlehem company, and they have a site in Bethlehem and a site in Allentown. Uh, Leah Valley Hospital is the same way. Um, there's a lot of companies that still stay, and, and, and trust me, we're, we have the opportunity to expand with these people to be uh, weather-centric, so if we would eventually want to do it, to what should be done um, into the cloud through TierPoint, we would then be able to go to uh, hop, hop to St. Louis and to hop, hop up to Spokane, Washington. There's a lot of other locations we could easily go to, but now but, but not under this cost. contract. No, we would have to make an addendum. Mr. Chukusik, um, why is this a sole source contract? There's no one. Even in Philadelphia, that would that when we went out for the original bid, that wanted to bid this for us. Pretty much, pretty much. Unless we go, we would go to the cloud or to a Microsoft or an Amazon. My old company, at Amazon, held they we built them four fifty thousand square foot pods, data centers, and two went down, and Amazon went out too. There was no, it's there was we are too small. Again, three cabinets, and we're in proximity. So as long as we're hot, hot on either side, we're. Yes. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Mr. I didn't hear what you said, Mr. Brown. I have to go back and recall, but um, there has been some consolidation in this particular service in the area. There used to be multiple providers, and there's been consolidation. That's why we're locally limited to um, tier point um, at this time. Well, I, you know, I, I don't have an issue necessarily with what you're trying to accomplish, Mr. Rouges, and I, I agree with it, but I recognize Mr. Phillips' concern, you know, that if we don't, if we don't put in some kind of an addendum into the agreement that says, okay, we're going to be able to also store this data somewhere outside of the 50-mile radius 
at the same time, whether that's or, or even if that's not necessarily a real time backup, but some kind of a, another backup system. Um, I, I, I'm concerned with it as well. well. We could easily use the technique as Hayden would uh, use the VM there. We could easily do that. Now there's going to be cost for us to store it in another location inside the airport, which we could easily do. If we wanted to adapt that and make that our next growth pattern, we could easily accomplish that within six months to a year. If that's something you would like to do. I, I would like to see that number. I would like to know what that number is. Can I ask one more question? Does this also include a DR drill yearly? Oh, yeah. Testing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Testing. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Mr. Warren? We, we test now probably on a monthly basis. Okay. Did you have anything else, Mr. Willis? Mr. Werner? Just, just one more thing. You said Xerox has a say in this? Is a part of it? Yes. Yes, because it's their operation. It's their operation. It's, it's, it's our, it's our, it's the county because they run. It's our, our system our because they subcontract. They subcontract. Yes. So are we? So is the quarter of a million dollars for the program? What, what part of that is Xerox? Uh, zero. Zero. They're just helping they're coordinate just helping. the data. They're just, they're just helping because there's they, no, they're there's no, no, no fiscal. Well, think, think of it this way: that the site will be similar if the county, uh, like we do now, uh, our current DR is over in Greystone. Or yeah, it's Greystone Building. Yeah, you know, and if we have an issue there, Xerox will go and so they just take, take care of take it. care of it. So okay. it's a similar concept. We just not it's not a county. I'm just seeing so. if they're trying to get if there's no. an extra. No, okay. No, no. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they do. Yeah, we have to buy equipment regardless. <laughs> okay. Well, who's recommending Xerox recommending all the equipment then? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we we've, been been yeah we've been working. Yeah, with, we, um, we just just in general, there is a you know we work with Xerox to uh, lay out a long term uh, uh, IT infrastructure plan, which includes regular uh, replacement upgrade. As required, with the servers. Or Hillary Clinton server. And, is that what okay. And yeah, uh, we we tend to uh, defer to Xerox on those recommendations. Okay. Uh, uh, right. Yeah, I was going to say that um, I, I don't have a problem really with a lot of the explanations. I probably would vote for this tomorrow, but I would like to see some ideas of how you can move it to the cloud in the future. But probably this is something that you know. Yeah, that, I, I, I mean, would, it's the, it, the, the prices. The price is not. That service is not a bad price. Right, yeah, and part of um, when uh, we came in in 2014, we had this conversation with Xerox when we started looking at various aspects, yeah. especially the state of our disaster recovery um, over in Nazareth. Uh, the concerns you're raising are the same. You can go anywhere from the incremental step we're taking, which is let's stabilize and, and get yeah. our DR in place, to complete eliminating all computers in this building and sending them out to another site and literally being uh, completely remote. So, you know, all the time I think you'll see a progression towards that cloud-based operation. Yeah. But this is about stabilizing our DR, making an incremental <coughs> backup that is much better than we have today. But um, looking at the uh, same concerns I have, okay. you have, are, are, are valid. Should we be in Chicago? Should we be in right. Massachusetts? Or uh, yeah, but we're not going to have a thermonuclear war anytime soon for, you know, military contingency. I mean, I think Bethlehem's far enough away that if Easton takes well, a no, dump, it, it Bethlehem's going to be fine. It's, uh, again, it's a matter of risk and degree. It's risk, right? right. You know, right. I mean, you know, we're talking about hypothetical situations. We've been going for all night long for this. So, yeah, yeah I don't, we're not, we're we're not talking thermonuclear right, war. No, we're talking we're flooding of the Lehigh River that could wipe out both sides of the Delaware. Yeah. You know, uh, hurricanes, those kind of natural disasters are more so prone. I've seen Easton get flooded out on both sides, but I haven't seen Bethlehem get flooded where, out too. Where, where this location yeah. is in Bethlehem, it's um, top of the hill, <laughs> <laughs> under the star. Yeah, under the star. <laughs> and then there's the thermonuclear. Yeah. And then there's the thermonuclear yeah, issue. Right. Then there's that issue. Yeah. All right, all right. I get the I get the point, gentlemen. Is there somebody on the committee who'd actually like to speak? Who'd like to make the motion to move it forward? I'll make it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so moved. We'll move it forward. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rugis. Is there somebody from the administration who'd like to address our last contract? I made a mistake. I'm not on the committee. <laughs> You're not on my committee. Oh, I am on. Your I, You're on my committee. I'm on your committee. I'm You're sorry. on my committee. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> holiday, though, You're on again. Uh, You're actually, on again, Mr. Phillips. Uh, we're going to request that we withdraw that con that contract for now. Okay. And uh, we'll bring it up at, at, at a later date. Okay, good. Okay, we will remove that contract at this time. Good. From tomorrow night. From tomorrow yes. night's agenda yes. as well? Yes. Which? Yes. 
May meeting. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll move forward to the May meeting. What, the $6 million? Dollars? Food service. Food service. Which one? At the prison. Here, what about this For who? Greystown? No, prison. Or That's already up. Yeah. What do we have? Right now we have Avion. Yeah, Avion's so already up. It's up? Wow, okay. Food service is off the table. Yes, thank you. Food service has been canned. Good. But um, shh. Fun. All right. Let's move on to Mr. Barron. I can't believe that's up already. No. You have your uh, for next item on the agenda is the audit report on the central booking fees. Yeah, good afternoon. I, I don't have an audit report per se yet because we were having some discussion about the best method in which to handle the situation. Um, I don't necessarily know that the controller has a role in this other than to determine if fees are collected and how much is collected from the Lehigh Township um, or Lehigh Township Regional Booking Center. So I'm going to give you a little back history and then sort of tell you where I fall out on it because I really think it's, and, and Mr. Kusick, I think you'll appreciate this, it's a high school math problem. How many defendants came into the Central Booking Center? How many people were processed through said center and paid the full amount? Does anybody still owe money to the center and on a payment plan? And how many people are indigent and will never see the money from them? Right. Um, honestly, I think that if um, there, last year there were 211 people processed through the center, according to Chief Fogel. Now, I haven't validated that number, but I can. He will be here tomorrow night. Um, also, um, uh, Cindy Miller is here from Lehigh Township. Um, and she'd like to talk, I guess, a little bit about if that if if that's okay. She had a, some things she wanted to share, bills and and what the actual cost to them is right now, um, so council can see that she has a, a sheet she wanted to give you. Basically, if 211 people are processed there at 20 percent, let's say 20 percent, pay that fee in full to dispose of all the fees, whether it's at Magistrate Hawk's office or whether it's here at the county, or whether it's over a payment plan to Magistrate Hawk, however that works out. That's uh, roughly 40 people, 40, it's 42.2 people, but there's not 0.2 people. So let's just say 40 people times $300 fee, you're at $12,000, which covers the cost for the center, which means there's a lot, the, the center's feasibility is clear if you're collecting the fines and fees. Now. I guess what got people's ire up is in 2016, the central booking plan, from what I gather, was approved and it included Lehigh Township. The fees that were collected from defendants that were processed at these central booking centers were supposed to go towards, um, were supposed to go towards, I guess, the cost of running those centers. And the $300 fee is actually um, more than most of this, that, that this particular center actually needs to run. Um, so it could potentially be a profitable venture for the county to pay for other central booking um, things as well. Not to mention there's no startup cost because we did receive a $111,000 grant. The grant didn't provide for any future funding, but so the way Chief Fogel explained it to me and um, from other people in law enforcement that I have spoken with, the fee was supposed to be collected to sustain the center. Okay. So Judge Hawk sends me this letter March 31st and shows up at your council meeting uh, two weeks ago on Thursday. In the interim, I spoke with him, I spoke with Mr. Kusick, and there was some discussion about that being clearly communicated that the center wasn't getting any funding. So I asked John Brown if he would provide me that clear communication. Um, that has not been provided. He said he would address the issue with you, Mr. Kusick. Still, I still don't know the answer to that question. He hasn't provided that. So. Taking a step back from all of that, I asked Chief Fogel to give me this information. I've r looked and saw where all the numbers go, where all the monies go. And basically, these fees are collected, processed through the criminal division, and then they're placed in the corrections budget. And it's placed in the corrections budget then for central booking. So it's within the general fund. It's within county coffers. Um, I personally can't make John Brown pay this money. Um, the thing that disturbed me quite a bit is I, I had a call yesterday with the president judge and he wanted to just convey to me he signed an order in 2007. The courts do not have any, um, do not have any um, 
jurisdiction over this. It's clearly a function of the executive and it's a law enforcement function. Primarily, the courts don't really care um, how defendants arrive to them or what manner they're processed in just so that they're processed appropriately, separation of powers you know, between law enforcement and the judicial branch. So we were clear on that, and he, he said he got a call from John Brown and said the controller was coming to audit. Um, and I didn't undertake an audit. Um, I don't know that that's appropriate other than to find out what those fees are. And I can give you that number without doing an audit probably within a few days if, you, if I have ac ready access to the information, which I'm sure MDJ Hawk will provide me. So I can clarify some of those numbers for you without a council resolution. But I can't, you know, absent waste and abuse to report to you guys, I cannot force John Brown to pay this bill with an audit. Um, I think it's, I mean, I know John, uh, Mr. Brown said, and I watched the meeting, because I, I was not in attendance, I watched his comments and said it was because we're, Bethlehem got the money for central booking because we're absorbing and taking on their 911 center. Um, these fees are not any part of 911. They reside in you know, the prison funds and it's how, you know, criminals are processed. So I don't really understand the logic there and maybe he can clarify and explain that. But one of the things I think you're going to hear from Lehigh Township and the frustration that I got coming from them is that John, Mr. Brown was part of these um, central booking meetings. So the, the plan was approved with Lehigh Township in there and now there's no funding coming to that center. And there is funding going to Bethlehem, and there is funding going to the center that's maintained here in Easton, obviously. So I, I, I understand why they're upset, but I, I don't have the power to compel that payment. Um, council may by you know, a budget amendment, but that short of that, um, you can't really force the executive to, to pay this bill. But I think there's a public safety issue, as you're well aware. Um, you know, with this, and there, there's a lot of other things floating in the background that aren't in the purview of the controller's office. And I just wanted to share with you the most I can give you is the fact of whether or not the center itself would be sustainable, like with the, the processing that goes on there. And I believe it would be, um, you know, just basically looking at the general numbers, but I'd be happy to calculate it well, for you. But what, what is the language of the, I mean, if you did an audit or you at least did some review, what was the language of the grant itself? What the, grant the grant itself did not provide for any future funding, which which is correct. I've, I've looked over the grant. There was no future funding. However, the 2016 central booking plan does provide fees and funding. Judge, Judge Barada's order was clear in 2007 that booking fees could be collected as per the, the state statute. So we didn't start collecting those fees until sometime in 2015 and 2016 anyhow. So we weren't collecting those fees up until that point. So we're, we, we didn't collect the money. And in 2016 when the booking plan was put in place, the understanding from people who attended those meetings, I did not, and this is coming from Chief Fogel, is that that money collected would go to fund the costs of those centers. Let, 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 me, let me just make sure I'm clear. So in other words, there was a point in time back in 2007 where we were authorized to begin collecting this? Correct, and it never was collected. And it was it never collected, collected until, until 2015. 20, so for 20, eight years, we didn't collect these fees. Correct. Yeah. And now, granted, we did not have a Lehigh Township booking center at that point. No, no, I understand, and, but right. regardless. We weren't collecting it in Easton, we and we were not collecting it centers. in, correct, yes. So we, we weren't collecting this fee. That's correct. We decide to begin to collect this fee. The grant has no wording that says that the township is going to be reimbursed. Yes, but there is a central no, I just, I, I'm asking yeah. the question. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Yeah. All right, but... Your understanding is from an individual who was at the meeting that there was an agreement verbally to, uh, there, to reimburse. I believe that the central booking plan is in writing. Yeah, it is in writing. And, and I think Mrs. Uh, um, uh, but Mrs. Is, Miller can... is that reimbursement in the central booking plan document? I believe it is, yes. Okay, that's, so, that's what yeah. I'm trying to get at. I so, want to know what's in writing, what was talked yes. about. Okay. Yes, so that is in writing. Okay. Um, and then, I again, I didn't have any communications from John Brown other than he would address the issue with Mr. Cusick. Um, I did speak with Mr. Dietz this afternoon, and we talked briefly about this, the, the situation. And I think Cindy Miller can add a little bit to that history there. 
Um, and then I would await what counsel would choose me would choose me to do. I don't know that an audit, a full audit, is necessarily the way to go because that's going to take a long period of time. And from what I understand from Chief Fogel, is that um, he probably has until the end of May until they they would lose their clean line, and then it takes about 45 to 60 days till the state police come in and take out all the equipment. And if they take out the equipment, it's going to be another 45 to 60 days if we decide to go back to that until they could come and reinstall okay. the equipment. Mr. Just Krause, the you have a question. Yes. While you were looking into all this and this, you know, reimbursement, wasn't wasn't the whole intention of this was to allow Lehigh Township to book up there to save them all the overtime and all the stuff from driving down here to our central booking and to free up officers and everything? Correct. Wasn't that like, doesn't that pay for itself that way by all the overtime that would have incurred and lost? Isn't it a wash? I, I haven't, st I, I, on, honestly, well, you'd have to ask Mrs. Miller I, about that. I'm not going to ask her. If you're yeah. looking into it, look into it that way, too. See I the could. money that was saved by not having the officers drive down here to our central booking, okay, mm -hmm. and what's saved over the years by allowing them to have a booking place up there to make it more convenient for those townships. Because uh, that is the intent of why yeah. it was put in. I can tell you the concern is after 3 a.m. No, I'm sure the central so. booking language was for our central booking, not satellite things. I don't know why Bethlehem's getting money. You know, I, I don't know why any of that's going on. But I'm, I'm just saying what they're saving by not driving down here to our central booking. And, you know, if it's such a thing, just revert. Go back to coming down to central booking. It takes care of itself. We have it already here. It's already in place. Bring the people down here. We'll book them and send them back up. There is, there is an intangible cost there that um, I can't to calculate to to the the citizens in that township. Right, and that's why they that, wanted their booking yeah. in the area to free up an officer so they wouldn't have to come down and spend three, four hours every well, time they so they, they had somebody. police coverage. And again, Mrs. If Mrs. Miller can well, answer that's those questions. my take on it. I mean, I going into booking and forcing John Brown to play him back right. and all this nonsense. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't even collect this money. You're lucky if we get 20% of the people pay these booking fees. We'd probably get about 20%. If, if la last From the booking fees, last month, not just at Lehigh Township, but overall, we collected $33,000 that was sent into the corrections budget. So we do collect a significant amount of money and monthly. We, we do book a heck of a lot more people down here in Easton and Bethlehem than they book up there. We do. You we know, do. That so. is correct. No, I understand. But, but I'm I mean, just if saying you're looking into it, looking into that too. See what the townships mm -hmm. are saving by not sending people down here, and why this was initiated to have one up there to begin with to save them money and time. It should be self-funded that way. My right, my right. opinion. All right, Mr. Kraft. Anything else? No. All right, Mr. Bell. The chair recognizes Mr. Bell. I'm just having trouble understanding why all this stuff isn't documented. Meaning all stuff what? Well, I mean if if. Stuff is being brought up, and I understand it, it, it's all hearsay. It's he said this. This was my understanding. If, if you're talking about uh, government entities, there should be minutes, there should be contracts, there should be verbiage that you can look at. That's pretty much cut and dry. And there is a there is a booking plan, and again, Mrs. Miller has that here, so she's well, gonna she can provide you that information. Right, and that was back um, to my point, which was there's a grant agreement that talks about the monies that would be transferred, and then there's a central booking plan, which, correct. you know, now I feel like I'm in an Article 13 discussion because, once again, we have, you know, multiple documents that control the situation. Correct. I, I mean, and there are, and I didn't know there was a central booking document until I delved into this because I thought it was pretty cut and dry. If the grant said no more money, then there's no more money. Right. But there's another plan that was in place that was that was put into effect and signed off on that includes this regional center so okay. again I, I don't know it, it's not really my role I can tell no, you uh, if right, it's right, feasible I'm, but I'm I can't saying. did you yeah. have something yeah, I just want to say um, just to add a little bit my understanding is in 2007 by statute we could start to um, assess um, booking fees for the processing but to, to have that um, approved by the court, you, you had to have a, um, a central booking uh, plan. So, and that, that only was in effect in 2016. So if you say, well, why didn't we collect from 2007 to 2016? Um, we, my understanding is we couldn't because we didn't have the central booking plan. Now, you may ask, why didn't we have the central booking plan earlier? I don't have an answer for that. Yeah, that, that would have been my question. Yeah, yeah. and I don't have an answer for that. And in the central booking plan, you know, it does talk about the um, Easton, it does talk about Bethlehem, it does talk about uh, Lehigh, 
And, you know, when I look at that, I have to ask myself, you know, between Bethlehem, which is a uh, an auxiliary site, and Lehigh, why isn't you know if one gets it, why doesn't why don't why don't they both? Why don't they get the money? That's 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 the thing that just jumps out at, at me. So it's it's kind of clear to me, believe it or not, you know, from reading that document. The only thing that I'm really a little perplexed right now is, you know, why Lehigh's not getting it. I mean, if if Bethlehem gets it and it's an auxiliary site. What's what's the reasoning? That's 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 my question. Yeah, that's and I think that's a legitimate question as well. Does anybody else? And, uh, and that is a question I cannot answer through an audit. Okay. No, you couldn't that's answer that one from that's yeah. a policy. And just, uh, I Mr. mean, Deeds. if we could get the that plan su submitted or, or or on record. Or, or. You got You can hear on the video. <laughs> All right. There was an entire packet that was submitted to county council during the last meeting. Right. And there were probably four or five copies of those documents. The plan is in that packet, yeah. along with probably a copy of Act 81 and probably all of the information that you are asking questions about can be answered by reading that packet. Okay. But there are a couple things I do want to clear up, and I wish Mr. Kraft would not have left the room because I would love to address his issue about how much money we're saving how about the amount of time that our chief spent coming down here during the day, mind you, while we're paying him to assist with Northampton County's booking center? Because Northampton County didn't have a plan. He was good enough to sit on a committee to get this county's center up and running because, quite frankly, it was a mess. It was a complete mess. So there were three officers that spent their days down here getting this one up and running, and now we find out that Lehigh Township can't be paid when he used all of his knowledge to get this one up and running. And the reason Northampton County didn't get the processing fees is exactly what Councilman Phillips said. There was no plan. Without a plan, processing fees could not be collected. So a plan needed to be written, and that's why Chief Fogel and a couple other officers were put on a committee that Mr. Brown sat on, or at least participated in some way, somehow, with I don't know who else. So you want to talk about the amount of overtime we're saving? Let's talk about the amount of time that Lehigh Township has given the county in getting this, their center up and running. And how about our public works people putting in the time to get the booking center running? Because we could, Northampton County's was a mess. That's why Lehigh County, or Lehigh Township really did a booking center. And it was to help with our overtime, not only the overtime, but the amount of processing. And it's not just Lehigh Township. There are six other communities that are utilizing our center. So it's the whole Northwest Quadrant who has to travel, or at least we have to travel, 45 minutes one way to a booking center. Who at the time, and at the time, and I know the changes have been made and the processes have improved, but at the time would take hours when they got down here to process someone. So that has now changed with what has been adopted today. So I don't know what other questions you know, you would like to ask of me that I can answer as far as Lehigh Township is concerned, but the plan is there. It is specified in the plan that Lehigh Township is to be included with payment. If the city of Bethlehem is getting paid, we do not understand why Lehigh Township is not getting paid. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, Mr. Deeds. I just think if we use Lehigh Township in the plan and to have the plan together to be able to collect the funds, that, you know, they should be getting their share of it to uh, stay up and running. Okay. Yeah, I was Any say, other statement? No. I'm at a disadvantage from you all in that I actually read the documents that was given to us. It has the um, um, the central booking plan. It has the, the, some of the state legislator relation. And, you know, when I read it, I'm like, yeah, I get this. And I understand the background. I, I got, you know, I'm really a kind of a decent command. And the only thing that jumped out at me is, well, why aren't we funding them if we're funding Bethlehem? And in the, in your in your review of those documents, why are we funding Bethlehem? 
It didn't, it didn't say. It doesn't specify that. Yeah. Actually, it doesn't. In that review, does that document, does that document specify how anybody is to be funded? Yes. It, it, from uh, the booking fees. It does. But, it, it states under Section Seven funding plan, and and I can read it if you want me to. Oh, go um, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it says the question what the statement is in it is please describe this plan's funding plan including how you will pay for the ongoing equipment maintenance staffing and continued operational costs in subsequent years lehigh township police department funding for the ongoing project will be provided in part by the general operating funds of the northampton county prison and the bethlehem and lehigh township police departments along with funds charged to persons booked in the central booking facilities Okay. All right. So we're asking, Lehigh Township is asking the, count, the county to look at paying the bills. Um, I have, we have copies here um, that we can submit. But in 2015, the maintenance fee is $3,500 <clears throat> for, and it's due, it was due July 9th. July 15, 2016, the maintenance fee, $3,500. July 1, 2017, maintenance fee, $3,500. And then the clean fee in April of 2017 is 7180 So past due would be $7,000. And to bring us up to, to include 2017, it, the total bill comes to $17,680. And I actually have copies of the invoices as well with this documentation. Okay. Mr. Kraft, I don't know if you had the opportunity to hear my explanation as far as the overtime and the amount of time that our chief gave to the county in setting up Northampton counties. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Phillips. Yeah, the, the one question I do have, and you may not have this now, Ms. Miller, is um, that that is described in the documents as a regional center, um, and, and it specifically states that it would taking um, uh, processing people from uh, the northern Lehigh uh, carbon, you know, the Sladington uh, uh, area. It, it, do we have? people from that area coming in? Because that, that could cloud the issue. Right, and I did ask the chief that question. He told me that we have had a few people from Slatington that came over. Um, Carbon County, um, he says to date probably 10, but it's, it's, for, uh, it's for suspect ID. It's not for processing. So there wouldn't be fees there anyway? No. Yeah. Okay. Because that was a concern of mine as well. I was thinking crossing counties and right. that might cloud the issue. But it's strictly Northampton County it initial. Is. All for right. processing. Mr. Deeds. So one thing is that I know we're talking about uh, Mr. Barron putting a, an audit together. You know, time is of the issue over there. I mean, they're weeks away from having the plug pulled from them and then, you know, 45 days from equipment well, moved. It, look, I, I think the, the issue that everybody wants to address is a $17,680 issue. Over three years. Right, over the course of the three years. I think the discussion it should be, you know, how we address that particular issue here and now. Oh, no, I agree. M moving forward from that, you know, it's a question of whether or not how these documents work together in the discussion. You know, I, I appreciate what, mm -hmm. what you're telling me as far as what Chief Fogel did or, or hasn't done. I also I hear, I hear Councilman Kraft's argument. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, so I, I think ultimately, in my opinion, it is the it is the responsibility of this committee to make a recommendation to full council on marrying these two documents together and deciding what the county asking, directing, whatever authority we have to direct the the executive on whether or not that money should be coming out of county funds or whether it should not. That's that simple. And I just want to make one more statement. When you call it a central booking station or center, if we're going to have something central, let's put it central in the county. I understand that the courthouse is in Easton, but nothing is central. Nothing <laughs> is convenient. It's, you know, you have our side driving 45 minutes one way. 
we're the ones that are faced with the overtime that we pay our officers to do all of this. I, I understand, but I mean, you can make that discussion from Portland. You can make that discussion from various right. port, port, you know, portions of Northampton County. Let's face it, we go from Portland to Regalsville, all the way over to Bethlehem, and all the way up, you right. know, to the to the county line in in uh, Walnutport. in Walnutport. So, I'm just to, saying, when you say central, you, I mean, if you want us to move central. everything to Nazareth, then we could that we could have them do that, us. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think what I think ultimately what what we need to do is make the committee allow a full review of that document and have a further discussion at council we can tomorrow. Move the jail, jail to Nazareth too. We can move the jail to Nazareth. It's essential everything. Mr. Uh, President. Uh, could, uh, right? Put the jail in Nazareth. Mr. Dietz made the comment uh, that we can't wait for the um, a completion of an audit. Now, my understanding of situational awareness is we've not tasked. We've not tapped. So he, he has, he, we're not waiting on. Well, oh, yeah, I'm, what I'm saying. Waiting. I mean, I just want to make that clear. Yeah, I don't right. want anybody to leave here and say, well, we're waiting for the, the no. controller to do right. something. In my, I, I'm saying, we all have to digest those documents. Correct. And make a determination what that's saying and make an action accordingly. All right. I believe that is within the purview of this committee, and that is where it, where it extends to make that recommendation to the governing body of the county, which is the council as a full. That's, that's my opinion. And that's the end of, but, end but, of it. But, but shouldn't this come out of the court's budget because it's a court's thing? It is Booking not. and everything? It courts and jail? No, it's not. The, the, courts, the courts, when you process somebody, the courts don't care how a defendant arrives to them. What they care about is that the defendant is processed, processed correctly. That's a law. What we're talking about is specifically a law enforcement, enforcement activity, issue, <clears throat> not a court activity. Okay. All right. Well, and that's a discussion we can have as a full council. Let's do Mr. Kusick and then Mr. Uh, Bennell. Then based on the comments we've heard from Mr. Barron, Mr. Dietz, and Mr. Phillips, uh, seeing as how time is the essence, is of the essence, uh, I will uh, remove the request then for a complete audit, uh, and uh, hopefully we can address this uh, more quickly. Well, and, and Mr. Kusick, you have my word. If there is something you want me to look at a number-wise, as long as I have ready access to the information, I will provide you the memo and documentation. But I don't, the, the, the cumbersome nature of an audit or even an agreed upon procedure in this case would take a considerable amount of time. Time just don't have in this, in this case. Well, I think we're back to the fact that we're discussing a 17 and a half, uh, 17,680 issue, which in the grand scheme of the budget of Northampton County is, is not a large number. Correct. Right. So I, I think ultimately let's address that issue, but I think as a council, Mr. President, with all due respect, an audit of that system may still be a worthwhile endeavor. I, it possibly yes. Mr. I, I Mr. Just, Bell? I know that our executive would like to make a comment. And we, okay, and we will give him the opportunity. So I'm just saying before we go back and forth, maybe he could clarify. Okay. And I guess the, the final question that I have then is how long until council makes a decision until we know Lehigh Township is told the decision so that we know what to tell the status or well, trying to collect I'm, their money. Well, I'm taking the discussion that this committee now has a full meeting tomorrow night with items we're moving forward. So I'm, I'm hoping that others can become as educated as Mr. Uh, Mr. Phillips, who, who has the luxury of, of being uh, retired, I'll hold that against <laughs> um, but the rest of us, I, I will assure you that I will take the time to review that as well, and any other members of this committee that would like to do that prior to tomorrow night, so we can have a full discussion. Okay, thank you. Accordingly, thank you, Ms. Miller, Mr. Brown. Number uh, number of points that were made, I'd like to um, clarify. <coughs> thank you. Uh, First of all, the um, central booking plan was updated uh, at the request of the Chiefs of Police Association of Northampton County based on, as Ms. Miller said, uh, it was taking us sometimes up to four hours to process a particular individual through our facility. Uh, I've been a former mayor. I know exactly the impact on a local police department to over time, uh, all those types of things. Um, the issue, uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, is the uh, in going through that update plan, uh, our sheriff, uh, local chief of police, uh, put people on a team. Uh, Dan Keene helped uh, put it together. 
In updating uh, the facility, uh, we spent about $150,000 uh, in the prison central booking center here, uh, making sure that we had all the right amenities in order to do what we do. Um, long story short, um, uh, right now, as far as I know, uh, there's not been a single complaint about our operation here. We're under 15 minutes drop and go uh, for the local police department. So it really does come down to travel time and a little bit of uh, administration here for local police departments that utilize our facility uh, overall. Uh, I don't agree that there was not a central booking plan prior to 2016. We've been collecting fees actually from 2007, uh, in 2000, uh, 2008 rather. Um, the challenge, uh, what this really comes down to, and this, I'm going to break it down to two points. We seem to got caught up in collection of fees and so on and so forth, and I'll address that uh, in a moment. Uh, the issue uh, I have with uh, uh, Chief Fogel's uh, proposition is that when he submitted the grant application, uh, language in the application and in the uh, justification for it is as follows. A regional center should generate enough revenue to sustain itself indefinitely. Uh, the benefit of a regional center, and this, we're referring to Lehigh Township's creation at this point, uh, is to reduce cost to each department involved uh, in the event the fees generated would not cover the total cost, assuming the center would not generate any fees, the annual cost diffused between the six agencies would be approximately $14,000 or $2,333.33 per year. That was the justification. So the assumption already was maybe we'll make some money, maybe we can't, but if we don't, you know, the six communities that are mentioned in the grant application would assume uh, the cost of operation for the facility. Um, based on that, it could be assumed, and I would assume that if uh, Chief Fogel and Lehigh Township uh, wanted this, submitted the grant, got the CJAB to approve the grant submission, uh, and then got the approval, they accepted the money, they would have entered an MOU of some kind with the six named municipalities to make sure that they secured that future payment against uh, the cost. It's not unusual, unfortunately, for local townships I've been, and uh, local departments. I've, I've seen this in Bangor. Uh, hey, it sounds like a good idea, and then three years down the road you realize, yeah, you got maintenance and upgrade costs that you are out of your reach. <coughs> Uh, in addition to the six named uh, townships, as uh, Mr. Uh, Phillips had uh, mentioned, Sladington Borough, which is in Lehigh County, Pollington Borough, which is in Carbon County, uh, Lehighton Borough, which is outside of Judge Hawk's district, I believe, uh, and then the, actually the Pennsylvania State Police, which, you know, we would enter an MOU. Um, so the fundamental issue is not whether or not the, the system is generating enough revenue or how many bookings actually took place. Uh, the key. Uh, for me, is that in the grant proposed in the acceptance of that money, the uh, Lehigh Township, uh, whether that was communicated to their board or not um, uh, through Chief Fogel, and accepting the grant was accepting the fact that in future costs would be assumed by the collective municipalities in that particular area. And that's really the $17,000 that uh, we're talking about. Now, when we did the upgrade here, uh, one of the things we did do was to go to uh, the courts. We asked Judge Broder to sign a, a court order bringing up the booking fee from, I think it was $200 uh, to, I think it's statutorily $300 is the maximum we could bring it up to, uh, which he complied with um, going forward. Um, that being said, we also upgraded our facility with people and everything else. And, and the fundamental challenge um, that we come down to is the county undertook this on behalf of all 32 police departments in the county of Northampton. So there are some that don't have uh, a convenience of a central booking that come here. Uh, uh, the chiefs of police have reported, as I said earlier, that unanimously uh, the improvements here are just exactly what they wanted. It was the number one priority when I came in as county executive uh, from that group to address the issue, and we have done that. So the convenience of using this uh, facility uh, right now is, is very good. The problem I, that I encounter uh, is essentially, and I'll provide this information for you, that uh, we are essentially running uh, the, if you look at central booking in isolation by itself, uh, we're running at an operational loss of $150,000 per year. So regardless of how many, uh, how many bookings, and you could do the math and why all those fees aren't uh, coming through, uh, the money that comes to us from the uh, criminal division uh, into the prison budget 
uh, is essentially about $150,000 estimated short uh, for what it would actually, just to cover all cost at this location in, in East in which we're obligated to uh, operate. In uh, 2016, we collected 2,700, uh, uh, $274,578 in booking fees that got uh, transmitted over. Uh, our estimated operational cost was $418,443. So the system, if you want to look at it as a system, um, if you want to look at it that way, there is no money to allocate out in support of these other locations if that's uh, fundamentally what we're supposed to do if the system was generating a profit. We'd like it to generate a profit, but it doesn't. That's just the reality of it uh, going forward. In looking specifically uh, at the numbers that were thrown around, uh, I took a, I did a, a, a fairly deep dive if I, uh, into, well, where are the fees? Why aren't they being collected? And, and in essence, the, the short of it is, if you look at total criminal cases filed annually, which is really the trigger for a booking fee, uh, there's approximately, if you, simple math, you use about 4,000 per year, new, new file. Uh, 45, 42 to 45% of, of those are DUI. They get moved, they don't go through a so booking, the they go through a DUI center, which is under the auspices of our uh, district attorney's office going forward. So you eliminate half of those. And if you continue down and do the math, and I've looked at this four different ways, essentially we're collecting about against the $300 uh, stated charge we realize about $69 against that 300, and that's how the math fundamentally works out. Uh, the reason for that are, are numerous, uh, and it really comes down to the fee and the collection of that fee. The fee, whether it's assessed or not, is really based on the disposition of the cases, whether they're plea bargain down below, where it's no longer criminal, so on and so forth, dismissed, waived, whatever that is. That's that's on the court side uh, of the equation. Uh, what we as the administration know, this is what we've collected. The numbers are um, uh, fairly consistent um, uh, across the board. In 2010, for example, we collected 246,000. We did see an impact from the increase in the fee. So we went from uh, to 206,000 in 2014 to 274 in 2016. So we assume that's part of that, that fee. Um, in, incremental uh, increase there. Now, in, in Lehigh Township would like to make the case of, well, we generated all this money. If you take a look, at, you know, um, I listened to the tape also, and, and Judge Hawk stated that uh, over the last three years, he's uh, doing about, uh, in 2014, 323 criminal cases, uh, 358 in 15, and 303 in uh, 2016. If you apply the same math that I did to the overall total criminal cases, the 4,000 out of file is about 8% on average. Uh, and that translates to, uh, if you do an average, probably about $20,000 a year in fees that come through um, his uh, district, which would encompass that entire area that Lehigh Township is, is referring to. Um, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the cost that, uh, uh, against that, uh, versus the savings, um, uh, if you do the math on the, uh, the ben, why, why would Lehigh Township want to maintain this? Uh, if you do the math on ter in terms of time, officer time, uh, relative to these numbers, so the 300 cases, and assume they're, they're running back and forth with the 300 plus cases a year, it could be more. Uh, basically, Lehigh Township, after paying the fees, would be seeing a benefit of about $16,000 per year relative to overtime manpower and those types of things, not having to book an extra officer. Uh, as the um, controller said, public safety, you get your officers on your street, not spending time in transit and so forth. So the whole motivation uh, fundamentally for Lehigh Township in that region for wanting a booking center is a convenience for their local police department and then also, um, I understand why Judge Hawk would want to keep it. You have fingerprinting, you have those uh, types of tools available that allow him to dispensate the cases quicker without having to run back and forth. Those, all those um, services are available here in Easton, if they so choose to use them. It's a convenience for the local township, I, I got that. Um, their cost savings and manpower, uh, you know, you, you know, uh, 
vehicles, you, you, if you, you do a cost analysis on it, it far outweigh the $2,300.33 that uh, they stated in their uh, uh, JAG grant it would cost each of the six surrounding municipalities if they so chose to uh, maintain the center beyond the grant um, expiration, which it has done. So, you know, fundamentally, there is no money. The county is absorbing the $150,000. That's fundamentally our contribution back to local police. Uh, we don't ask them to make us whole uh, by kicking in a percentage for use of the facility or those types of things. And it's an operational uh, uh, type of challenge, um, uh, if you would. Um, I, we do appreciate Chief Fogel's participation. He volunteered to uh, help with the central booking upgrade that was here. That was the selection of the chiefs of police, not the county asking him to uh, participate. There were a number of uh, people that participated that really helped bring this together. The county put in a tremendous amount of time uh, and cost. As I said, we put in $150,000 in that facility alone uh, to bring it up to speed, and it's uh, highly functioning. Uh, overall, um, you know, at this point, um, so. I, I have one question that I'd, I'd like clarification on. Uh, Mr. Brown, you said that there was a plan in place and fees were being collected prior to 2015. The, the controller stated otherwise. Can you clarify for me what, why um, that would appear uh, to be a rather have, easy thing I to have determine? out of our own IFA system, uh, and I'll provide you copies, the Revenue that has been assigned to the central booking account in the prison budget since 2007. Uh, we, between 2008 and 2010, uh, we kept actually an independent uh, uh, item line in that we could identify specifically what those fees were and the cost. So the general le the general ledger had a specific had, line had item a for CBC, that. CBC, a central booking center, in the prison budget. After that, it was melded into the overall. Uh, from then, I just did a roll forward on the, uh, not okay. the revenue, that's actual revenue collected versus our expenses, and our expenses are just a 3% a, a, a compound rolling forward, and it's actually probably higher than that, but uh, for this conversation, it demonstrates what we needed to. So we've been collecting fees since uh, at least 2008. 2008. All right, great. Thank you. Let's start down that side. Anybody, Mr. Graft, anything? All right, Mr. Dietz, we're well, just going to go right around. I just want to disagree with your response on the grant. You know, you said that if it doesn't generate enough, they should, you know, expend it. They're getting enough people through there that I think justifies it. Now, if they process 20 people a year, then I think the convenience would bear onto them. But, you know, as you said on the grant, they are pumping enough pump people through there to generate it. To generate what? The cost of, of maintaining. Uh, the again the creation of that system is the 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 central booking uh, program is not a okay it's not a profit center for these for Bethlehem or Lehigh Township uh, or Northampton County if we were in a position in Northampton County we are I don't I don't have the luxury of closing our central booking system we don't you know it's an obligation that we inherited originally back in 2007 if I remember right Bethlehem City was actually the central booking site. We didn't have it at the prison. It was created in the city of Bethlehem on a 24-7 uh, basis. That's why it was established there. Later on, and I don't know the timeline specifically, uh, they said, eh, that's a little bit too much for us. We need to do this in Easton, which then the county agreed to do. Uh, so that history has, uh, has moved through. It's never been about um, a, a profit center. So whether uh, Judge Hawk um, does, uh, you know, 300 uh, bookings, uh, well, fine. They can they can come here. They can come here and do it. Why? That's what you there say. There is no, no profit. Well, I, so the 300 people that they process, if it exceeds their operating costs, obviously roll back into. But I, I think Mr. Brown's, with all due respect, I think Mr. Brown's point is that the expenses that are being incurred to support that system, even though it's remote, still exceed the revenue. Right. I don't think it. Period. Well, he did the math. He just said he said twenty thousand. No. no. And also, a lot of these get bargained down that they aren't even they don't even collect the fee because when they go to right. court, they be they become changed as to what the what it was, and you know, three hundred twenty-three bookings could end up being 
No, the, 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 based on my calculations, and again, it's just an index, but it's similar yeah. to overall, um, uh, through uh, Judge Hawk's courts, right, yeah. they would have generated um, 16,700 in 2014 fees that were collected. Gross, right. actual gross collected. revenue right. fees, not gross profit. Revenue, well, I, I realize that. I, I understand the difference. difference. But what is their actual expenses then? What? Yeah, 35. So. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Please, I'm not having the debate of whether it's right or wrong. I'm, well, just I'm, I'm debating the math, but she's no, saying 3,500 expense. But, but again, we're, we're uh, getting 10,000. You know, my, there's the there. Deeds, it is. The, the right. key is this: the overall system is not profitable. Okay, the county is assuming $150,000 operating loss, and it's been an operating loss since it opened. All right, from two hundred forty thousand dollars in in two thousand eight, all the way through one hundred fifty one thousand and sixteen, we assume that we absorb that. That's right. Okay? okay, the cost that we're talking about that Lehigh Township is asking for, is offset and profitable for the Lehigh Township by not having their officers have to make the forty five minute drive back and forth to Easton to do what they do in Lehigh Township down here, and that's fine. So, even if they pay the fees, it's still a net. Uh, benefit uh, financially to the township and that's elected on their part and they agreed to that in the grant process when they wrote it and it was acknowledged in the grant process that going forward you would assume this for that very reason because they know the reason they want it is the, to save on officer uh, the time and okay. the, I mean it's, it's simple math well, I was when a, you look at it that way now they're saying we don't want either well, stuff, say that, that grant says that fees. facility doesn't it doesn't say that if the whole if every facility as a whole doesn't make profit or, or, or doesn't generate right. its revenue, it's that one right there. This, when they filled out okay. that grant for that, this, that this is a Northampton County central booking plan. Okay, it doesn't. We don't operate uh, Lehigh Township. All right, you so you're, you're separating the grant and the plan right now. But uh, you're reading the, the, the grant. Uh, the pl no, the the plan and the grant. The the grant was at their petitioning to establish a center in Lehigh Township. Right. Okay. When we updated the uh, plan here in Northampton County, making all these accommodations that the chief of police were asking for, we made all those accommodations, and and each of the Bethlehem, uh, Easton, and Lehigh Township were named because they were booking centers in the county. Okay. It's not a county facility. Okay. It's a locally operated elected position uh, uh, facility that they choose to operate uh, independently for the benefit of their regional community, and I get that. Uh, they, all those benefits are there, absolutely. Um, but in the stated, when they set it up, it was stated that they would assume the cost and share it amongst the six municipalities. I went on their website. I could not find an MOU uh, that they would have established. I couldn't see a resolution or an ordinance from the township back since 2012 saying that they were even aware that this, was, this grant was going through with these conditions tied to it. So that's an administrative breakdown between the police department chief and, and the local township um, uh, going forward. So, you know, fundamentally, that's the that's the main objection I had. And we, this was communicated to Chief Ogle through the uh, Sheriff's Department and through the Chiefs of Police Association. All right. Anything else, Mr. Deeds? No. Mr. Metal, anything from you? I, I guess, uh, I mean, I, I, I understand what the executive is saying, and I understand what Ms. Miller is saying, but I guess my, my other concern is that if it's serving other municipalities, shouldn't those fees be dispersed to them as well or go to them instead of coming back to the county if, if the center is to remain operational? Okay. I, I, I hear your point as well. No, I, I, I understand it. So the fees go to the county. The, the, the problem is that, that Lehigh Township is looking for some type of reimbursement. Because the county has to pay the bills. All money must go through the county according to Act 81. Okay. Uh, so we're, if, uh, let time. Sorry. No, we're not right. This We're going to run, you had your chance on the floor, unless so, Mr. Bennell has a specific question <laughs> for the controller. Or Ms. Miller. Well, I guess my question would be, be to the. Then I'd prefer we continue. I guess my question through. would be to the executive. I okay. I, I, the, the question would be is, is it in your opinion, should this center remain operational? On, 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 a, on, a, as far that, as the county's behalf, because that's what we represent the county. The operation of this facility uh, 
even if I elected to say no, let's say I said no, I don't, I don't have the power to go in and shut it down. That, it's a local, locally run regional operation uh, with that, you know, uh, no more than I can force a municipality to open one. I guess, you know, through the county we could, you know, open a half a dozen counties. But why would I do that? It, it makes no sense, especially when we're losing uh, its operationally in the red as it is. And the grant was uh, paid to Lehigh Township. They're the ones that acquired the equipment, uh, had it all installed at their facility for the, uh, uh, the, the control identified, 111000 I thought it was 80000 but whatever that cost is. And that's what we're talking about. They, they have the equipment. Now they don't want to, uh, uh, and I can understand why. If you look at their police budget, it's, he's over, Chief Ogle's over budget. I got it. You know, he's running overtime and everything else, you know. Uh, types of things and the township's running on a tight budget but uh, fundamentally the principle is you know this is what they agreed to now they they, they don't want to honor that agreement when they're left holding the bill okay mr. Bennell anything else I'm good mr. Kusick do you have any comment uh, you know just a, a general one uh, you know as I remember we us going through the budget last year we spent fifty thousand dollars of taxpayers dollars to study whether or not we should put a fish tank at the bottom of the hill <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is $17,000 for public safety. Um, so I don't know why we're arguing about this when we've, we've spent money for a lot less trivial stuff. There, so thank the, you. The answer to that question was it was suggested and recommended several times that the uh, Lehigh Township Police come and apply for a grant through the county in order to compensate them for these additional costs that they, they're incurring in the system. They didn't do it. They apply for a number of grants, uh, LSA and a number. Of, why they would not come and apply through a grant process in order to compensate them, that's, I encourage all municipalities where they can to come and apply, and, and, and the chief was encouraged to do the same. Because it's not, not it, it's, it's a small amount of money, but it's not an obligation, and that's how it was presented by Chief Fogel. Uh, that's an obligation of the county, and my interpretation of all this is it's not. You may, council may elect to do what they want on it, but based on the statements of Chief Fogel, they were incorrect and not accurate uh, relative to the collection of fees, amount of money generated, and so on and so forth. Right, thank you. Do you have anything else, Mr. Cousin? No. So where Mr. I'm, Phillips. Where I'm tripping over, and this is what I, I, I said before was, could you explain the financial support that we're giving to Bethlehem? Why why that support is different than we would be giving to the the um, booking center in um, in Lehigh? That was simply a, a workout I had with uh, Chief Deluzio uh, over a number of costs that they're likely to be incurring for other unrelated reasons. So it was just a. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. That probably is the weakest part for me in the fact that you're treating one municipality different than another municipality. If you're supporting the, uh, the booking center in Bethlehem, it, it seems like we should support a booking center in, in Lehigh Township. That, that's probably a problem for me. Well, um, and, the, and uh, again, with Bethlehem, uh, uh, they were told these are not our fees going forward. They're yours. They're not our expenses, you mean? Right. Yeah. Can I ask Mr. Yeah, Mr. Barron also? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I thought um, I thought that the uh, that the booking plan, uh, central booking plan, was a recent document, and I and I obviously from what you know the executive said, I might be wrong on that. So I, I there were other plans. I just the newest one. I was yeah. focusing on the newest one. Okay. So. So, so. Do, did we did we collect fees like in two thousand? From what I understand, the three hundred dollar fee. I, I spoke with Leanne uh, Leanne in the criminal division. Um, that that one fee we we have collected central booking fees in the past. We've always collected the twenty five dollar fee for DUIs. Um, there were other fees assessed. I, I have to go back and look at my numbers, but from what I, I couldn't find anything, and Leanne said that was a relatively recent fee, and and Chief Fogel did confirm that as well. So I'll have to look and see could how you, they're categorized. You do that? I'd, I'd be curious I, when I, we started I, I, I that, that, that $200 fee and then when the 300 came. Let me clarify, and maybe this is part of when you look at it, uh, uh, Mr. Barron. 
the fee changed in when we updated the plan. That was part of the change. It went from 200 to 300. So the plan <coughs> that the controller is talking about would be the one that was updated recently, and and those associated fees might be the the distinction. So, and, and and maybe I could have been a little bit more clearer on that when I spoke. Okay, so it's fine. Anything else, Mr. Phillips? Mr. Warner, last but not least, I assure you. Just, um, I, I've been everyone's points are. Uh, I've been digesting everything. I keep hearing over and over again that the chief Fogel said he has to sustain his center. Yeah. I'm hearing that. The processing, there's a definition of processing that obviously one group thinks of one way and another group thinks of another. And there's a disconnect between what was what Chief Vogel believed and what has happened in the in the interim. So, um, and I hate to think that seventeen thousand dollars is going to interfere with a program like this. Um, I know I realize we're losing money, but obviously it's not about the money. It's about maintaining the centers and it, I think we just have to get to the heart of the the problem with the chief and find out what his understandings he, were he will be here tomorrow night He's and he will address he, it at courtesy of the floor I'm sure the, his comments uh, I mean the, he, his understanding was it goes to the, the corrections money goes from the corrections to the general fund correct correct it goes it goes from uh, the criminal agency fund the to general the general fund. fund, which is categorized in corrections. Corrections is part of the general fund. But he didn't. He didn't say that. He said it goes to the general fund, and the county. He he is obligated to pay. He he wasn't he, he's he doesn't understand the county. With all due respect to the chief, he's really okay. he doesn't understand the county budget. But, and that's why I wanted to clear because Mr. Dietz asked me this this morning yes. how that worked, yeah. and that's why I went to Leanne Fisher just to make sure I had that clear. I just I really do think it's just a matter of sitting down and saying, okay, here's here's what what it really is, and here's what your understanding is or your misunderstanding is. I I, I agree with you, Mr. Geisinger and, and Mr. Phillips and and, uh, and Mr. Kraft on a number of items, but I just I just think we need to, to sit down and talk and we can work this thing out. Nothing else from on my end. Nothing thing. else, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Byron. I, I have on it, this item on at this least. Item. Uh, all right. Well, I it, you know, I will I will make one. Uh, I will invoke the the. Um, right of the chair to make one final statement on this. And that is ultimately, it, it, I respect what Mr. Kusick is saying. It's a $17,680 yeah. issue, which in the grand scheme of things is nominal. I would like to resolve that $17,680 issue as quickly as possible. Thank you. Then, I just, then I would like to make sure that we as a body understand what these agreements should have, did say, what they sh what's in writing, not what somebody believes. Not what mm -hmm. Look, we all deal with contracts. I we all have to deal with contracts. We are responsible to the taxpayers to have things in written agreements so that there are any misunderstandings are then able to be clarified under the rule of law. That's why that's what we're asked to do. So, uh, you know, no, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it's in writing, that's what we need to go right. by moving forward if we decide otherwise as a body to clear this up. Understood. And, right. and, that, and that's what I do. So. All right. Thank you. Okay. So the two audit reports you have before you. I'll start with the corner cremation fees. Um, obviously, our recommendation was policies and procedures, um, and we would like to see them do more automation with regard to those fees. Um, Zach does an excellent job. He obviously is resistant to the automation portion of that because he does have a pretty firm and clear system. But we have, uh, we have, we're pushing him towards that and reminding Zach that um, he is the corner, so he should be well aware that he might not always be the corner forever. Um, <laughs> that's that's my corner joke. So, um, so um, we're we're still pushing for those uh, those those um, that to be automated. That's pretty okay. much the highlight of the report. Any questions about that no. report? So the Graysdale Agency Fund is the only other report we have. Um, the major issue here was just some recommendations on policies and procedures with regard to, um, and um, I guess Mrs. Allen would, would agree, it's sort of like things um, uh, Mr. Cologne inherited, it was just always the way it was done. Um, they had their own independent credit card for Walmart, which they were incurring fees on. So they had a store credit card, which has now been changed and, and pulled out of there. Um, 
uh, timely disbursement of residence funds, specifically deceased residence funds, and just really tightening up the policies and procedures that they already had in place, which, which was done. We were a little shocked to see that credit card in there. Um, yeah, I would be too. And um, we made sure that that was taken care of to tighten it up and bring them into the P card area. It was, it was for a matter of convenience. They also had two petty cash accounts, again, for a matter of convenience because the, in, in the volunteer office specifically, they do a lot of outreach work. So it's sort of like, okay, the volunteers are coming in. We need cash money to go do certain things and get certain things done. But again, there was only one receipt for 300 some dollars, again, very small amount, that they couldn't find the receipt, but everything else is so well documented, it's, it, it was really a small, minuscule amount of money. So you, 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 do not, you did not detect any fraud or abuse? Nothing. No, there's, there was, Perhaps there was nothing like that. Perhaps some practices that could be improved, but no. Correct. And just to, again, like with the automation of the cremation fund to bring that in, it's these small little offices that continue to be that like fiefdom unto themselves yeah. kind of thing. Very good. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Barron on either of these audits? Very good. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, Mr. Barron. Are there any other items that need to come before the Finance Committee at this time? Seeing none, I, move, I ask for a move to adjourn. To make so a move. So move, second, and done. We are adjourned. <laughs> no, I was gagged. That was it. Cut off. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna agree with you, but I'm not going to. I just gave up on. I gave. Up.